uh, our blogs as well. If you have a problem, here is how we need to solve it. Your son or daughter should go to the coach first and try to solve it. Please don't just go to the coach. Encourage your son or daughter to try to fix it themselves. If the problem persists, have them try to solve it by coming to talk to me. If after those two things have been exhausted, there's still a problem, then set up a meeting with the coach. Don't approach the coach after practice. Don't approach the coach after a game. Set up a meeting with the coach. Um, the coach will not debate playing time with you. It's not going to happen. They might explain. If you're curious why isn't Billy playing more, the coach will tell you. Maybe Billy, he might just tell you Billy's not as good as the other guys. And the coach is the coach. I can't help you with that. The coach is going to be the one that makes the evaluation. But he might surprise you to tell you, well, you should see Billy in practice. He doesn't try very hard. When we do sprints, he comes in last every time. He doesn't pay attention. He's disrespectful. He rolls his eyes. He has negative body language, whatever it is. You might be surprised to find out why your son or daughter is not playing. Our coaches don't mind being asked that question, but they won't debate that issue with you. If after all that you have a problem still, you can come and talk to me. I, if you come and talk to me about, you can always come and talk to me about anything that's an ethical or safety ish, issue. But any other thing, I'm going to always ask you, did you talk to the coach first? I really want you to talk to the coach first. And then after that, you can talk to me. And if you're still not satisfied, obviously, you can go to the principal. I really, it's just not a great thing when, oh, I'm upset and I'm, you know, Bob Hayes is my next door neighbor. Where's Bob? I'm going to call Bob Hayes and I'm going to go right to him. That's not, a good, that's not a good way to go ahead and try to solve the problem. Try to stay with the protocol um, to go ahead and, and uh, solve all the problems. Uh, playing time. Freshman and junior varsity athletes. It's not going to be completely equal because it's just not practical. It's very difficult for a coach to have the stopwatch out to know all the time. But at the freshman and JV level, everybody plays. Now, maybe not every game because, you know, some games uh, may go a certain way. But over the course of the season, it's going to be pretty even. It's going to be pretty even. And along those lines, I do want to say, because sometimes I get asked this question from freshman and JV parents, there is a Patriot League rule that prevents us as a school from publicizing the results of JV and freshman sports. Because the emphasis is supposed to be on development and participation. So we don't emphasize winning. Coaches should not be making the decision about whether to play a player because, oh, they want to be undefeated or they want to win the game. Now, the coaches are obviously with the players they have trying to be successful. We're trying to teach our kids to pursue excellence. But it won't be the end-all and be-all in who they're going to play uh, during the games. So when you wonder, sometimes people say, how come you don't tweet? My, the freshman team has won seven in a row. It's against the Patriot League rules. If you look at the Duxbury Twitter or the Silver Lake Twitter, they don't do that. Within the confines of the specific sport, if boys soccer has a website, which they do, the, um, they can post the results of boys and girls freshmen, I mean uh, the boys uh, freshman team if they want, within the confines of their own sport. We still, still, Sumas takes pictures at all levels, so you still have plenty of reason to go to whathletics.com, click on the pictures, you can see them. If something great happens sportsmanship-wise, we publicize it, um, but we don't emphasize winning. At the varsity level, um, the varsity level, we do emphasize winning. We are striving for excellence. We are trying to be the best we can be. These kids have worked so hard to try to get their team to a certain level. So playing time is given out by the coaches based on who they think gives the team the best chance to be successful. So this is the pinnacle. This is probably the highest level that most of these students will play at at any level. So I sometimes a parent will say, you know, how come it's, it's unfair that my daughter hasn't played or my daughter's not playing. You need to know at the varsity level the coaches are going to play the players that they think give the team the best chance to be successful. Now, that doesn't mean they could be the best player and not play very much because maybe they um, have been breaking team rules or they don't give great effort or whatever it is. But it's not like freshman and JV when somebody's like, guaranteed a certain amount of playing time. And even at the freshman and JV level, I should say, if there's bad attitudes or discipline problems, then playing time would be taken away from them as well. Hold on. We're almost to the panel here where you're going to be able to ask a few questions of some of our athletes and some of our parents. Can you go to the next slide, Jason? Here's the bottom line. Here's a, here's a picture. I want you got all the parents in here to think about this. So I really want to go into this season. I want you guys to have a great year. I want you to think about this scenario that almost every parent has had. You're sitting or standing in your doorway, and you're watching your son or daughter on their bicycle in the driveway when they were a little kid, five or six years old, and they fall off their bicycle. 
and they skin their knee. And that little kid looks up to the door, but they don't see you in the door. What, does, what would most five and six-year-olds do when they look? They fell off their bike in the driveway. They you know, skin their knee just a little bit. They look up to see if mom and dad are there. What do they do when they don't see you there? Get back on the bike. That's exactly what most, and studies have proven this. Studies have proven this. The little kid will brush off their knee. They're going to get back on the bike, and they're going to keep playing. They look up, and they see mom or dad in the doorway. And you as a parent, you see your kid fall off the bike when they're five or six. What's the first thing you do? You go running out. And what does the little boy or girl do? They start crying. Folks, that's where we are right now. Your kid's going to fall off the bike. They have to stop looking to you to solve the problem. The best thing that can happen this year is for them to face adversity. For the coach to say the wrong thing. And coaches are not perfect. Coaches are going to make mistakes. Things happen really fast. They might say the wrong thing at the right time, at the wrong time. Your kids have to figure out how to solve it. Don't steal the opportunity for them to get one of the best lessons from high school sports. To have an official make a terrible call at just the wrong moment. They don't need mom or dad embarrassing them by yelling at the official. They need to figure out how to fix it. These folks can fix it. They can face this adversity. That's what the high school experience is all about. They have that bag of Skittles. Let them eat their Skittles. You enjoy the ride with them, but let them have the experience. So when we talked about solving problems, have them solve them. They can do it. You'll be very proud of them. I do just want to tell a story real quick about one of, a player that played for me. Most of the coaches in here most of the coaches that we have here at Whitman Hanson, because if they didn't have what I'm about to say, I would try to find new coaches. They care about kids. They care about kids. They want your son and daughter to have a great experience. Obviously, coaches are competitive. They want to win. But most coaches really want every student on their team to have a great experience when it's over to have said, I'm glad I was part of that team. And that goes for the person who's starting to the person that's on the bench at the end of the bench. And I was talking to somebody just recently. I know I don't look this old, but I've actually been coaching now 26 years. I know it. You can't believe it, right? I don't look that old. It's my 26th year coaching. And I've been fortunate. Four of my players have asked me to be in their weddings, which as a coach, that's like, wow, you want me to be in your wedding. That means you had a great experience. What's really interesting, the common denominator of all four of those players that have asked that, that I was, they were all marginal players. They were all players that didn't play very much. They were all players, they weren't the superstars of the team. And to me, that says that, they, that the experience was beyond how much they played, it was beyond winning or losing. And I've had a kid come back to me one day after a big win. You know, we, we, you know, we win a game, the kid didn't even play in the game, but you know, you talk about what they do in practice, so if you're in football, they might be on the scout team. And let me tell you, it makes a big difference how they practice. Everybody's important to the team, and parents unwittingly they undermine what happens a lot. Kid's real happy, gets in the car ride home. Oh, we won the game. And dad's like, I can't believe the coach hates you. I can't believe the politics that they play. And you're like, well, where did that come from? The kid was just all psyched up that the team won the game. They had a great, they have made their best friends. And a parent unwittingly undermines what happens. So I just ask you, do your best to try to keep all that stuff, any negative energy you have or anything that happens during the, try to keep it to yourself and let them have the experience. You don't know what happens at practice. You don't know the discussions that happen with your players. My coaches, I talk to them. I want them to make every player feel as important to the team as the best player to the, to the player who may be the, the least skilled because they are all important. They may not all play as much, but they are all important, just as important. 